Hello traders, how are you? Wanjiru Bishangi here from Forex Exploits Online Academy. I hope you've been well, I hope you've been amazing, and I hope you've had time to watch my other videos. I have requests on support and resistance, and I already did the video. So if you're the one requesting support and resistance, this is the video. And it's very, very important for people who do smart money trading. If you're a smart money trader, or if you're a high volume trader or a block trader, then it's important that you make notes about the items that have discussed on support and resistance video very very important and if this is your first time this is your first time getting to this channel don't start with the tough ones don't start with the fancy fancy uh, uh topics here no start from the bottom okay get started in the right way so today's video is a promise that i made about creating my flashcards i wanted to share my flashcards for last week and so people said i should do a video on it and this is the video so what's a flashcard basically a flashcard is a photo a picture a screenshot of trades that you've taken or trades that you've missed actually but have already occurred so is this the picture that you you print or you save on your computer or phone to train your brain to train your brain or to show your brain a setup now when you do it continuously or faithfully for a longer period your brain has a way to store these images and therefore in future if this image shows up again your brain will remind you that hey you saw that somewhere and therefore you can go back to your flashcards compare it with the current market and therefore you don't miss the trade so how do you use flashcards you help them to learn in hindsight hindsight basically means from history from the past and why are you learning from the past so that your brain can look for the same in future or in foresight flashcards are very very important especially for the new people who are joining Forex. and also for people who keep saying i can't get a breakthrough flashcards will be your breakthrough it doesn't matter if you've lost a hundred accounts start doing your flashcards do your flashcards once a week for the whole week for me i do my flashcards every friday so you're going to find me doing my flashcards on friday and going through them on sunday before the market opens that way i get to refresh my brain now do this if if you're struggling with your breakthrough in forex do your flashcards note you cannot do a flashcard if you don't actually know what to look for so make sure you've done your basics right you've done your strategy classes right and now you do your flashcards now, flashcards uh, created will be determined by one, the strategy the trader uses. So depending with your strategy, you're going to get certain types of uh, flashcards. Then we have the trading skill level. Your flashcards as a beginner are going to improve as you move on, as you add to your skill. So it's okay if your flashcards are messed up, uh, that, you know, the first three years of your trading. They, they, they may not look like it, but later on, you find that you've actually totally refined them. Then, of course, the trading personality. This is the type of trader you are. If you're a scalper, of course, you're expected to have a hundred of them in a week. If you're a day trader or a session trader, a, a flashcard a day for a tradable item will just be fine. While a swing trader may get one for the whole week or one for the whole month, while a position trader may actually just get a peak, a peak flashcard for the quarter. Okay, if, they, if, if a position trader gets at the peak or at the beginning of the trend for the quarter, that's just one flashcard per item. So the number of or types of flashcards created are determined by your trading personality and of course the time frame used if you're doing your flashcards on the one minute or five minutes you're going to get a hundred of them 
which is still okay if that is what works for you now for this specific video i'll be using different strategies because this market uh you're not going to get a trade every single day based on your strategy alone so i've been around therefore i know a few of these strategies and so when i get a trade i'm able to know which strategy fits that trade so i'm a block trader myself i do block trading but i also have uh, my backbone knowledge on the market maker strategy so the first two will be very dominant in this video because basically this is me trading therefore this will be most dominant but i also know something about the break and retest i gave you the savior strategy therefore we'll be doing the liquidity grab i hope you know uh for block trading <coughs> there are videos on the channel when you're not rush so if you're new and you don't know what i'm talking about there's this block trading series it has three parts okay the block has three part three this is part one this is part two and the entry is part three so that is what i'm talking about when i talk about uh, when i mention the blocks then we have the market makers so for the market maker strategy i do not have videos for that but there is the ebook too ebook too is perfect for that later on i'll be doing an audio for the books so i'll definitely let you know the break and retest is you can actually just <coughs> call them the patterns because when the break happens so that's the first break you don't expect the market to just push you expect it to retest that break before it moves so that is break and retest so this is break this is retest then that is entry now if you've been around in the market you basically see that it is the that right the same so break and retest entry then there is break retest entry then liquidity grab let's say we have a yesterday's low or a last week low so the market got to that low then it be pushed push then the following day is going to come through some weeks there can be two three or four but they are best if they are two or to just do a candlestick and a tail or two candlestick and then the market goes so this part here is what we call the liquidity grab there is a video on this strategy there's a video in the on the channel talking about liquidity grab we have this video here so if you don't know anything on how to trade liquidity grab this is your video and actually for people struggling with a stable strategy for people struggling with a stable strategy this is your go-to video okay this will give you good money or good returns in that, in that case then we have the order flow now the order flow <clears throat> or the smart money concept uh this is very very common i think it's the most common strategy from 2020 then we have the support and resistance or the free zone trading i've already done a video on the support and resistance and of course we have the london breakout strategy now i did the london breakout recently this one this is the video i'm talking about the london breakout strategy it's also very stable especially for pound traders and usd chf traders this is a a good good uh, strategy don't forget that you can use either of these videos to trade they are very very i usually just do videos uh, for stable stable ways of trading therefore pick the one that you feel works best for your brain remember different people have different brain capabilities work with what works best for you now before we get into the video remember you can send your you can send your request you can send your challenges you can send your uh, your topic request to my uh, facebook page on forex experts online academy you can send us a message and in here you can also get my books i write about forex therefore i have six books so far on forex you can pick 
either of the books depending with your level of skill if you're beginning this is your book this is the beginner guide if your market maker strategy then this is ebook two and ebook three they are basically on the same strategy if you are a price action trader this is the demand and supply kind of trader uh, you want to get those high volume uh, trades but done in the smart money way this is your book the price action and of course if you are a block trader like myself I have ebook five for you. Ebook five <clears throat> is special in a way because it shows what I do every single time I open my chat. So this is like a program. It's like it shows what I do when I open a chat, what is my thought process and etc. So we have ebook five. And for the fundamental trader, excuse me. <clears throat> For the fundamental trader, these are the people who want to trade the economic events. Then I got you. I have the book for okay. And if you're not on social media, you're not on on Facebook. You can actually get us from LinkedIn. Same name, and you're on my channel. Therefore, subscribe. Same name on all platforms. Okay, and we do not have any Telegram. So don't get scammed out there by people creating fake telegrams and asking for your money and your accounts in here we do not do that those are the three platforms that you can get me on now let's get to the video now first things first when you're doing your flashcard you really want to see the overall or you want to have an overall feel of the trend the easiest way is to change your chart to a line chart, then squeeze it in, okay? Squeeze it in, like don't enlarge it, don't look, make it look like this. You can see much from that angle. But suppose you squeeze it in, can you see that flow? Yeah, I guess you do. So squeeze it in on a line chart. This is to give you a, a, a feel and on this video, I'll be doing the majors because I can do flashcards for all in one single video. So I'll be doing the majors. Being August, this is a dollar month. So I'll basically be doing the currencies that have USD. Can either be a base or a quote. And the first one is cable. So I'm on the four hour since I'm a day trader. Sometimes I do day trading, sometimes I do swing trading, depending with where I get the setup at. So if you're a day trader, you want to have a relationship with your four-hour chart. Very, very important. So get your currency of choice, go to your four-hour chart, get to your line chart and squeeze it in. By squeezing it in, you can see now what it has been doing. And then I have this question of people say, oh, my chart is moving a lot. Yeah, if your chart is moving a lot, you just need to right click in uh, anywhere on the screen. Uh, click on properties, go to common and uncheck this box. Okay, you uncheck them, then click OK. And therefore you can be able to control the chart without it auto scrolling. I hope that's it. So now when you squeeze it in you want to find whether it's coming from a peak high or a peak low and i think i've mentioned that severally that where the market is coming from is very important because you get to know where the trend is going and in this case you see we're coming from low we pushed up 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 and we got to this high but the market never violated that high therefore from this day from this day, that's a timestamp. That is first June 2021. From that specific day, the market has been moving down. Okay, from there. We've been having buys, of course, because the market doesn't move in a straight line. But what's more dominant? It's the selling. We've been creating lower lows. You can see that we've been uh, creating lower lows, those sharp, sharp ends. Okay. And on your market structure, we have a video on market structure, very important. This video, make sure that you watch it to understand what you do when you squeeze in your chart. Make sure that you watch the market structure video. When you're doing your market structure, it's important to only pick the high volume uh, points. 
again we're going to learn that on the market structure video so you don't want to have these parts here or you don't need to actually pay attention to such no you want those uh, sharp spikes sharp spikes when you're doing your market analysis so we're going to start on the daily chart then move to the four h4 then to h1 and of course entry on the 15 so let's get started gbp usd on the daily chart now on the daily chart we see we've been moving up i have the 100 sma as a trend uh trend identification ma i already explained that on the moving average video i've already done that so we're pushing up and we go to this high when we go to this high we have equal highs at the top so i'm going to mark it as a high then of course we want the external structure broken of course before the external structure is broken we have the internal break okay we have the internal break we also you can see that we also have three uh hits to the high so you can also have a micro micro structure break but since it's on the daily it's not important and there we have our external break giving us a low note you can also call this a low if you want if you like those tiny tiny moves but for me i prefer the spiked ones now we have this low and the other side will be giving you a lower high so basically this is market structure on the daily now why are we doing market structure on the daily because we want to be on the safe side we want to know what is our daily trend very very important so our daily trend we don't want to go against it and if we do go against it it will be for creating the next lower high for example if you know that this is a spike creating a lower low you'll not be scared to trade for the following week to have buy trades why because you know after a lower low what do you expect you expect a lower high so instead of sitting out you can actually counter trend to get that lower high the only problem is if by the time you realize this was an actual spike the market is here and then you take a buy from here but that is the end of that counter trade then you'll be in trouble that's why the sma is very important because you do not take any trades near it if it's a counter trade anything near it you'll be looking for the actual trend trade and we've already agreed you're coming from the peaks so any touch any touch of our ma we should be looking for either a break and retest or we'll be looking for you know a trade we are within the or according to the trend but we are not trading on the daily no we're not on the daily is just supposed to guide us on where the market is moving and you can see gbp usd be pushing down now we go to a four hour chart now why is the four hour chart important because now this is where we get our trades okay our trades will come from the four hour the daily was supposed to help us to know the trend that we're supposed to respect now the four hour is supposed to give us our setups okay now we're coming from the high of course we also have to have market structure on the four hour you can see from the high from the high now on the four hour you can see that they have moving averages the reason i have that is because i already said that we'll be using the market maker strategy they ain't important you can still use the 100 sma or the ma's that are used on the uh moving average video okay now mark your market structure on the four hour and what will you be looking for on the four hour We'll be looking for every lower high and every time a lower high is formed then you prepare to sell why are you preparing to sell because remember the daily is on the downward trend how will you know that now it's no longer time to sell we will have what we call institutional reversal patterns there's a video on that there's a video on how to uh, 
how to identify a change is coming. Video, this video here. This is the video that will show you when it's time to change. Remember, we're on the selling cycle as far as cable is concerned. So unless we have the patterns to change. Now, for example, last month, it gave us three hits to the low on the four hour. You can see that on macro, macro structure means the, you know, more spaced. So on macro, we have three stairs. We have the first low, the second low, and the third low. And there are rules to this law. One, it should not exceed a no some number of uh, candlesticks. Neither should it be more spaced. You can watch the rules on the three hits to the low from uh, the video I've shown you on institutional reversal. So you have the external or the macro. Then you have the micro. The most recent, we also had the three hits, one, two, three. But what happened after this reversal pattern? The market pushed up, but, but it did not break our previous lower high. If anything, it just reacted to, was it a block or a void? It just reacted to an engulfing block. So what that means is that this reversal is not in void. That reversal was not strong enough. And that is why it gave us a break. If you do a trend line, now this is the break and retesting. That's a break, right? Yeah, you can also have one here. The, micro, the aggressive one. So with the aggressive one, we take this candlestick and draw a supply zone. And when the market comes back into that supply zone, get into the trade. Or you can also just trade another one here. And you see this candlestick, you create another. It's your difference with how you approach it supply zone so when the market comes back to test that break you join in it all depends with your your patience your patience matters and that's not important what i want to highlight on this is that the market did not break our previous lower high and therefore this was expected now the current market today is here so this is our last low and the market has broken below it so we want to see at the end of this four hour candle does it just throw us a stop hunt and close above because if it does that and break you can say i have an aggressive i have an aggressive trend line here if it breaks my trend line i will not join the buy trade i'll have to wait for a retest and then the market to continue but you need to understand the candlestick language. You need to understand the candlestick patterns that are happening here. Do not be very quick to do a buy. Do not be very quick. I know people are losing money from yesterday, last week, all this because you're only seeing a buy. Do not be very quick to do a buy until your aggressive trend line has been broken. Not only that, until the candlestick patterns around this area give you a reversal pattern. And if you don't know the candlestick to check, there is the video on that. We have the candlestick patterns to check. So you can actually pause this video, then go to the channel and watch this candlestick pattern. If you're a cable trader and you're losing money on this low path here. Very important. So that's the four hour chart. We're still pushing down. You go to your one hour chart. Now, for the one hour traders, for the one hour trader, the one hour has a lot of noise. When you talk about noise, it means it has so many movements here and there, here and there. The easiest way to stay safe if you're uh, a one hour trader is there a way to stay safe? I would say yes and no at the same time, but the one hour trader should be very, very careful. Work on your blocks, 
okay if you don't like block trading work on your trend line there is a video on uh, how to do trend lines or types of trend lines on the channel so you can actually watch that but on my one hour you can see that i have an accumulation and distribution inside an rsi my accumulation and distribution is the black one while the rsi is the blue one now how i use my accumulation and distribution one i don't trade the one hour chart it's just that it's just there because when i ask people what you know what time frame to use they uh say that they wanted the one hour i don't know if you trade the one hour okay anyway so on the one hour you've seen that i've added the accumulation and distribution uh, which will basically be there to identify, not to identify trade setups, no, but to identify the peaks, the peaks. How? When you're talking about accumulation and distribution, what that indicator is all about is supposed to show you the faces. For example, this lower high, this lower high, after the market, let me give you, a sensible explanation so we have these three hits three highs three hits to the top with a micro structure and a macro break structure so we would expect that the market would push low but what did we say that it has to break and retest and so the retest from this high you need to identify the most common area which can be a block or area of interest so later on, after a few days or maybe a week or so, the market went back. Now, how you tell <clears throat> that the pushback is going to give you an awesome, awesome trade or awesome setup is there should be a very, you know, it should accumulate, then have a very violent or impassive move back into, back into your point of interest. Remember, accumulate, then momentum then back if it does not accumulate but just you know in passive move then that shows that your point of interest will definitely be broken now that's a secret so write it down let me repeat it in a slower version if your point of interest is approached or retested in violent moves without an accumulation then your point of interest is about to get violated. But if your point of interest will hold, it must give you an accumulative phase or accumulation, then some violent momentum, and then some pull off when it gets to that area. Okay, And so you see this. And so you know that we have a slower high. But the market is straight. So we have a break again. Wait for a retest. And the retest is retesting this engulfing block. See that? This block here. So we retest. And what happened from that area? It's been pushing lower and lower. Now for the one hour trader, Pay attention to your impassive moves. Passive moves are discontinuous moves. So every time you have an impassive move, uh, you wait for the market to either retest or accumulate then join in. Accumulate or join in. If you're going to add in your accumulation and distribution uh, indicator, note that anytime there is an area of interest, you want to check where your accumulation and distribution is at. At the top, it will be a distribution. So if I do a timestamp there, by the time the market was moving, where is my accumulation and distribution at? It's at the distribution phase. It's at the top. Look at the levels. It's actually above 85, meaning it's up there. It's saying that, hey, we have so much we need to distribute. We have so much we need to distribute, therefore even giving you extra conference, extra conference for your lower high. Very, very important. And of course, if it's on the lower side, you'd expect that the market 
is at accumulation. If it's below 15, it's at accumulation. Therefore, you it's saying, hey, we've accumulated so much. Can we at least have a release? So you wait for the market to trap, 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 and maybe have an opportunity to push up. The RSI, I don't use the RSI here. I just used it to herbal or to be able to put in my accumulation in there. But again, this is not a an and uh, A and D video. We are on flashcard. Then and now we we've agreed that the daily is showing selling. The H four is on selling. H one now has been come uh, has come from the distribution. Therefore, we're pushing lower now. The three time frames are all talking the same language. And this is the key point. If two or three time frame as doing one or they're in one cycle you got no business at all going against that cycle you're going to get yourself bad daily is pushing down h4 is pushing down h1 is pushing down so when you get to your entry which is the 15 minute or five minute or one minute depending with you know whatever you trade what will you be looking for? Of course, you'll be looking for sell trades. Okay. So beginning of the week, let's start from Friday. So now when we talk about, before we get to types of trades, there's something I would want to discuss. Types of trades that I'll be talking about or trade setups. One, I'll be talking about the pattern. I'll be talking about the patterns. I have not written this beforehand. So we'll be talking about the patterns. When you talk about the patterns, these are basically uh, so we have the patterns. These are the W's, the M's, and so forth. When we talk about the W's and the M, we have the multi day. It can be uh, from different days. Okay. can be multi-day, multi-session. Then after the pattern, we have what we call LSP. If you are a block trader or if you're in my trading program, then you know what LSP is. And of course, there will be the pins. These are trade setups that we'll be discussing about. Uh, I'll be discussing on the flashcards. So we have the pins. The pins can be either pins uh, to the EMAs or pins to point of interest. Then with the pins, we also have what we call the ID50s. ID50s. So the ID50, we also have what we call the continuation trade. I'm going to explain this in details later on. We have the continuation trades. What are the continuation trade? We also have what I usually call the zero trade or the zeroing. So it can be zero trade, zeroing trade, whichever name you want to give. Then we have no trade, of course. Then we have the hits. We have the hit trade. Now the hits can be hits to the low or hits to the high, can be three or two. And of course, finally, going to have the liquidity up. so these are the setups we'll be talking about uh when you get to the entry time frame so for the patterns we have the w for buying uh you can get it with two for that for people who don't know how to identify that we have ebook two. Okay, we have ebook two for the patterns. So these would be the W's, the M, the multi sessions, the multi day uh, W's and and M's. Then we have the RSP, LSB, sorry, LSB. This would be the last step uh, breaker or broken, whatever. So this is for the block traders. 
and of course if you're on my training program this is basically our major entry our major entry uh, strategy then we have the pins now the pins you can also learn the same from ebook too it's a market maker entry uh, setup same as id 50 you also learn it on ebook too then we have the continuation trades continuation trades basically mean if this was a prior trade then there will be a day that there will be no setup but the trade will be continuing from the previous setup so a continuation trade is a trade that continues from one setup that was from the previous day for example today as i'm creating this video gbp usd is having a continuation trade it's continuing from the what it did yesterday so it's, it's a continuation trade you may not really get a setup in it but it's continuing the same way the same thing that euro euro audi euro australian dollar did yesterday it was doing a continuation trade from two days ago so yesterday it continued what it had done two previous days okay continuation trade trades that don't have a setup but they are continuing from a previous setup then we have the zero trade the zero trade is a trade where you make money and lose money at the same time oh this is what i'm saying let's say these are 24 hours so this is the beginning of the day and this is the end of the day so you have a buy to the top and the sell to the same point so if you got into this period at this point here you got this money but you did not pay attention the market came back to the same entry point and actually closed there so you earned 10 you lost 10 okay so it's when it hits both sides unless you're very very careful you actually make money and lose it so that's what we call a zero in trade where you have to be on on alert okay <laughs> then we have the hits the hits now they can be the three hits to the top or the three hits to the low so one two three and hits cannot be two by the way but they can be four Okay, the three hits to the high, the three hits to the low. And of course, the liquidity grab. So let's say you have a last week low, a last week high. So that's last week high. And then the market closed there, then goes back, then comes back and throws some tail or some candlestick and the market goes. So this is the grab. Note, it doesn't have to be a high, can also be equal lows. So the market has been giving you double bottoms and water view then later on it shows some tails or two candlesticks and then just pushes up this is also a grab can also be on a, a tra trend so it's been pushing up 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 then something happens remember all this is liquidity it's called the trend line liquidity you can uh, read this from ebook five ebook 5 it will show you the different types of liquidity so there is liquidity created on the trend line so what happens the market just throws something like that and starts again it was just taking out this liquidity which is also a grab so we'll be discussing this so these are the different trade setups that you can also uh, that i'm going to be showing from my flashcards remember you don't have to use all these eh? just work with what works for you something i would also want to throw in there if you are an ma trader if you are an ma trader you can also add you can add one more you can add one more there where you call uh, you can call it ma crossing so that's for the MA traders. I don't have it because I don't trade MAs, but you can also use that. I'm going to show you. Show you. So MA closing is also a trade setup that you can use. You can also use break and test. Now this is what you can use for you for your flashcards. I've already discussed what I'm using. So for you, you can decide what works for you best okay 
so we get to our 15 minutes so note these are the patterns that i'll be looking for or the patterns that showed up now let's get to 15 minutes the beginning of the day uh the beginning of the week sorry so i usually prefer checking the friday because monday is highly determined by what happened at the close of the week so my flashcards always start on a friday so this is friday remember we are on a downtrend so when i open my chart basically what will i be looking for i'll be looking for selling opportunities if there's a buying trade i'm at a level where i don't counter trade at all no matter how beautiful the counter trade is i do not touch it so friday what happened first things first you don't just get into a trade and by the way this is a, a template you can also use a naked chart okay i'm just using the template because there's that high volume uh, impact that I want to discuss. When you open your chat, you don't just click buy or sell. Of course, by this point, you know. Therefore, there will be something that you'll be looking for depending with the type of trader you are. I'm a block trader. So volume is very, very important for me. Volume is very, very important for me. When you talk about volume, I mean that pump. I mean that commercial or that institutional pump. I want to feel that these guys, the big boys are in the market. I want to feel they are also trading. And how do you get that? You need a spike. You need a spike on your volume, uh, volume indicator or whatever you use. You want to have that spike. If you're on a line chart, it's even better because you get uh, this kind. If you're on a line chart, this is what you're looking for. If you're looking for sell, this is a volume indication you want to have that spike that spike very very important because you're selling now if you're not an online chart and you're having a template of course you want to see this this is called an outside structure you can also call it a shark fin. very very important it's it's actually an indication that hey guess what there is some pumping that is happening and that's why i have this the time stamp if you don't know the reason i have this red line here is to identify the pump area or the point at which money was pumped there and if you don't have the spike of course you can identify divergence okay you can also identify divergence you see from the pump the market actually pushed up as far the prices on the candlestick but on my tdi the market pushed down so what that is, that's called divergence. Again, I have another extra conference, which is divergence. And that divergence is here. You really want to identify the candlestick responsible for that if you are a block trader, if you're looking for uh, a block trade entry. Now, since I have had my spike, that is what we call outside the band. If you're using BTMM or the market maker strategy, you're expected to have this outside the band, then inside the band for a sell trade. And that's exactly what we are having here. We have an outside the band, then inside the band, which creates an M. You see this outside the band, inside the band. You can get that from ebook too. It's actually going to show you how to do that but basically it's outside the band inside the band down and that's exactly what we have we have outside inside down so that's a name pattern now if you're a block trader you want to identify your spike after you identify your spike you want to know where that breaker block is at that's the blue box you have the breaker box you can learn that from there the block series and then once these are uh, confirmation, you sell. So that's why we have RSP. So on Friday, you could have gotten in using either of these. And of course, if you are an MA trader, there could have been a crossover down. You could have taken that trade too. Then we have uh, the second day, which is Monday now. Monday, we have an ID50. An ID50 is if the trade moves more than, uh, is it 50? You can read the ID50 
uh, from ebook to how to get them but this is basically uh, the retest of the aqua so you have an ib50 which you can also call a continuation from friday no setup but just a continuation so monday was just free flowing from friday then we came to tuesday tuesday there is no trade for me why because remember we are pushing down and what did tuesday do is that it retested it was taking a break so for me it's a no trade day but of course depending with your you know your greed eh? and of course your discipline you could have taken the counter trade but for me i already said i do not do any counter trading therefore tuesday you just sit it out on wednesday remember at the back of your brain you know we're selling so we've already seen this that happened on tuesday therefore what will you be looking for the line here is called a blueberry and you can see that it was throwing tails there so you can take these as uh tails to the blueberry that is one or you can find our spike okay you can find our spike and our joy buttons then you can also identify the m pattern which is above below above again down okay, whichever way if you are not rsb trader of course you see that you wait for break down then on thursday this is mail for the 200 ema you can see that the market was just trapping around that and of course we have you remember my timestamp is supposed to show you where there is the pumping to so get the pump to the top so what do you expect uh you want to look for the pattern or the candlestick language around that pump and the trade setup is two pins to the mail down on friday we have what we call continuation no setup at all even if you check on the tdi there was nothing but we just continuing continuing from thursday so this is basically a continuation trade what happened yesterday again it was just a continuation trade so from thursday we're just continuing with no setup at all even though yesterday we had this spike this spike here so with that spike it's a confirmation that hey guess what no matter what trade you take you should be pushing lower very very important so that is cable those are the trades you would have found if you are trading in line with the higher uh time frame trend line uh trend sorry so those are the different types so let's check another currency so let's do do you do usdc here for usd card you can do usd card again we start from the daily so minimize that from the daily we came from the high dropped down uh, currently we from the low we pushing up in this funny funny move so we up to this part here where our highs now our last high was actually not a high but a, a, a stop hunt you can see that these were equal highs this one two three what happened we had that liquidity grab or stop hunt so we also had a gap there that means a lot and currently the market is retested so we do not know if it's going to break if it breaks this high we continue higher if it doesn't break that high and retest would expect to have a sell stance now we go to the four hour the four hour of course uh, we're pushing so it's always good to squeeze in because if you squeeze in now you get to see uh clearly the sharp points so we've been pushing up we've been respecting this trend line to the top and any void has been filled and we're pushing up on the one hour because i said on the one hour we want to have our accumulation and distribution now for one hour here is showing us by the time this buying started we were at the accumulation point so we expected to buy that's super obvious and currently where is our market at 
it's between 70 and 85 so we'll be looking to let off some steam and on our, on our chart you can see that we we have a yesterday's high that has been stop planted i hope it holds we also have that that's a break and this is a retest hoping that it holds because if this candlestick closes below then we'll be looking for a stop hand kind of trade you can uh, watch that from the liquidity uh, the liquidity strategy video so what are the flashcards from friday what are the flashcards from friday we have this is friday so since we're pushing up what did i see on friday there was this multi-day w pattern so we have first leg second leg this you know it didn't create uh, the low on friday did not break or come near our previous day low therefore it gave us a multi-day w pattern if you are a block trader we had that rsp and of course since we are from the lowest point it can also qualify to be a peak trade so for people using ebook too this is a peak trade you can also call it a multi-day w pattern on monday we were flip flowing monday nothing at all just continuation of friday that's why monday is beautiful because if you have a, a peak trade on Friday, there's no need to get scared. You can actually just hold it, hold it over the weekend. But it's only safe if it's a peak trade. For example, look at how Monday was beautiful just because it was a peak trade on Friday. So you get the Friday entry and it's all money on Monday. But come Tuesday, the market needs a break, right? Cannot push all this volume. How much is this? let's see that's 160 pips in a day 160 and if you got it from friday that is 185 so pushing 185 pips the market needs a break so you expect it to retrace so for me again this will be a no trade day but if you're the people who like trading every single day, this is a beautiful counter trade. It's a counter trade. You can counter it back to the blueberry. On Wednesday, we're pushing up. Remember, we're on a buying cycle. Therefore, we'll be looking for our trades to the top side. Very important. If you get the pump or the spike, very important. And now here we have the liquidity grab trade. Why? Because it's on yesterday's low. Remember? This is yesterday's low, the blue dotted line. You have these two candlesticks throwing some tails down there, then shift away. So this can qualify as a liquidity grab trade. If you're a block trader, it's also an RSP. And if, of course, you're a market maker trader, you can call it an off the BB trade. It's an off the blueberry. It was just trapping on the uh, blueberry, which is the 800. So an off the blueberry trade pushing up then on Thursday of course you want to identify the shark fin to the bottom side or the pump then after the pump this is a drop base drop base you can drop base rally so you can learn about this kind of setup from ebook 5 ebook 5 but if you're using ebook 2 this is an off the mail so you see the 200 then it's been trapping you know everything about the pins to the low this is something that is very very common when it comes to the market maker strategy you have pins to the low so you have all these pins this is a symbol of reversal or the market is getting ready to to push away from this low so it draws pins 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 then goes up then on friday no setup at all but it's a continuation continuation from what happened on Thursday. and when i talk about no trade at all is because it's usually very messed up sometimes okay no spikes no nothing or so many it depends so you can sit out the continuation trade okay you can sit it out and not every trade gets a continuation it has to be a very strong trade 
The reason this one is strong is because the drop base rally is usually a very strong setup. Then we had yesterday, of course, you, the same setup, drop base rally. And today, today since we are reversing at the top side, it, you can take it as a liquidity uh, grab to the bottom side. Or you can just ignore it. If you don't, uh, you don't want to take the trade to the top side, you can basically ignore it. Uh, yeah, so that's how to take those trades. So here we have a beautiful liquidity grab sell to the bottom side. Remember on the one hour chart, it's a beautiful on the four hour chart we are testing. So you need to make sure that you're taking a trade that is in line with what your 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 higher time frame is doing. So you see that beautiful and on the daily, of course, we are testing. So you want to have a trade that is in line with all the others like all the others are showing the same thing if you take a trade that is you know against your other time frame then there will be a problem okay i hope i'm clear on that then let's move forward uh, which is our next one maybe we can do the last one since it's the same concept so we can do australian dollar again we start from the daily from the daily here you see we are coming from the top here coming from the top the top our second high did not come higher than our previous high so we have that failed peak we have a break of structure we've been pushing low been pushing low you can watch the market structure video pushing lower and lower and lower and here we have our three time stamp to the bottom side our previous lower high was a retest of demand turned supply so it had to be retested as a supply zone currently the market is retesting a supply turned demand zone would expect the market to do a buy a buy stunt if it breaks this lower high then we'll be changing to the top side. But in the meantime, it's just a retest trade. We're not on the daily, it's not yet confirmed if we are pushing higher. On the four hour chart, on the four hour chart, of course, we're pushing lower and lower and lower. Then we go to this part where we have this channel to the bottom side, which is a reversal pattern creating break of structure giving us our first high and our first higher low then the market pushed to our second high now if you've watched the institutional patterns you'd see that after the second high the market is give, is supposed to give us our uh, second higher low which is a confirmation it gives us confirmation that the confirmation that now the trend has totally been changed or has changed and here you have this break of aggressive trend line on my four hour i usually like to use aggressive trend line so i have this aggressive trend line which was broken yesterday and has been retested today if the market holds to the top side then this would be a very strong move to the top side but the only way to tell is actually to wait wait and see wait and see now on the one hour chart, of course we have our accumulation. Uh, it's on the 50 level and we now have our uh, triple bottom. See that, we have our triple bottom. If it holds, we'd expect the market to push higher. If it doesn't hold, then we continue down. On the 15 minutes, of course, starting from Friday. From Friday, we have the triple top. Okay, uh, from Thursday, then on Friday, you can call it double uh, 
double swap or you can take the peak trade or the RSPs. I already explained that. On Monday, we have the multi day M pattern with the triple top, of course, from Thursday. And you can also trade the gap. On my support and resistance video, I explained how to trade the gap. So this was also a gap trade. On Tuesday, we have the zero trade. Now the zero trade, you make money, selling, then lose it. On Wednesday, we have the M pattern and we also have the RSP. If you have block trader. On Thursday, we have the M pattern. Remember my timestamp again, I'm repeating this just in case you were not paying attention. My timestamps are supposed to show me the sharp pins or the pumping areas then on friday it's a continuation trade from uh from thursday and it can also be an id 50 because if you did a lot of trapping i don't know 50 ema then yesterday of course uh we did the stop hand trade down and today we can either do the stop hand trade to the top you see this is last week low we've just done that um you can see this this is last week and we have this stop hand that is also around yesterday's low. So this can be a liquidity grab trade if it holds to the top or better still it can be forming a trade to push down. You just need to be very, very careful and very keen. Note it has given us that push, but be very careful on when you're taking trades that are against your higher time frame trend so these are some of my flashcards i can do for all these currencies but that would be too much work right but now i hope that you've gotten you know an idea of how i do my flashcards now you can actually just take these as photos so you can have uh the snipping too and what i do is if i want a photo I just do that and maybe I can print it out. And so you have all these printouts. You can create a book, a folder, whatever you want. And then with the photos, you know what to look for in future. Otherwise, remember, watch the other videos, subscribe, share with your trading partners and communities. If you have a question, uh, send me a message on the Forex Experts Online Academy. If you're still learning, get either of my books, depending on your level of skill. And of course, uh, we also have personal training and mentorship. You're welcome to join the next class that's uh, starting on Wednesday, which is tomorrow. So we have a class starting tomorrow. So you can join. Remember, it's a one-on-one -on -one class, so you don't have to learn in a group. We just open those slots and then you can choose the class that fits well for you. But what I usually say, it's always good that you start with self-training so that you don't limit your brain. Your brain is amazing. Start with self-training. And once you see what your brain can do, now you can maybe look for a mentor from that. But don't get a mentor for things that you can actually self-train on. Otherwise, until next time, I'm Wanji Rukishangi. I'm grateful to be part of your trading journey. Until the next video.